Welcome to the um, Town of Hopton Board of Selectmen meeting. Today, uh, Monday, October 5th. Let's uh, call the meeting to order and let's start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We, uh, this is uh, usually the time when we uh, go through the public forum. Are there any residents coming to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions? I see there are none. Okay, let's jump on to the consent agenda. The board will consider approving the following uh, boarding committee appointments. Jessica Shea as the at-large member of the uh, Board of Selection Appointment to the Capital Improvement Committee to complete a five-year term to expire on June 30th, 2016. Mark Hyman as a at-large member of the Board of Appeals to complete a five-year term to expire on June 30th, 2018. Nupa Patel as an a associate member of the Board of Appeals to complete a five-year term to expire June 30th, 2016. Eddie Lee Schaub as a at-large member of the Sustainable Green Committee to complete a two-year term to expire on June 30th, 2017. Um, Shadisha Koku as an at-large member of the Sustainable Green Committee to complete a two-year term again on June 30th, 2017. Mena Kashik as an at-large member of the Sustainable Green Committee to complete a two-year term to expire on June 30th, 2017 also. Um, we also have, we're accepting the following gifts, $130 in gifts from Linda Chaus and Yoga Beach for the purpose of the 300th anniversary celebration. A $10,000 from Paul Nunziata's estate to be donated to the restoration of the Catholic <coughs> Memorial Fountain on the Town Common. The Appropriate Appropriation Committee Appointing Committee Minutes, we will approve those uh, from September 15, 2015. Appointment of a Special Municipal Employee, the Board will consider designating the position of Outside Expert Appraiser as a Special Municipal Employee for the Town of Hopkinton. One day liquor license, the board will consider approving the following one day liquor license, Hoptoberfest, Hopton Public Library Foundation for October 23rd from 7.30 to 10.30 p.m. at St. John's Parish Hall. Um, parade permit change, the board will consider authorizing a change for the previously approved parade date due to um, inclement weather, it was from last Saturday the 3rd, they want to move it to October 10th. The board will accept the resignation of Gary Trendell from the Upper, Trails, Upper Charles Trail Committee. As, does anybody want to pull any of these out for discussion? Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was actually going to ask somebody if I wanted to do it. I'd like to pull item one, uh, items two and three. <laughs> I'd like to pull items one, item one, items one, four, five, and six. Well, I was going to pull item seven, but now. <laughs> <laughs> there is no seven. <laughs> okay, so we've got. Basically all the appointments. Okay, so we're pulling out the appointments for discussion. Okay, so so two. And um, so we're going to pull out three also. Uh, so pre permit, one day liquor license, okay. The resignation. So five, six. Sorry, we were all talking about item one and just the seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then that's, that, that, that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so the chair will entertain a motion to accept 
uh, items, Roman numeral items, two through seven. So Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to thank Gary Trendle for his volunteering on the Upper Charles Trail Committee. I know he's a very busy man and does a lot of volunteering, and I'm sure this is part of him managing his time, but I'd just like to sure his efforts were recognized. Absolutely. He's done a great job on that. Will we be sending a letter to Mr. Trendle, please? I'd also like to uh, thank people for their continued generosity and donations to to, uh, yeah, that's great um, for the uh, statue, for the uh, fountain. Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Hur's question, do we typically send a letter out when someone resigns? Yes, we do. We do? Thank you yeah. again for the service. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, <coughs> so we have a motion and a second. We had further discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Present, not voting. They're too minimous. Okay, so now let's um, let's go at Roman numeral number one, numbers one through six. Let's start with uh, Jessica Shea, an at-large member for the Board of Selectmen appointment today, CIC, for a five-year term to expire on June 30th, 2016. Mr. Hoy, I believe you pulled that one out. I did. I just think it's important whenever possible that we talk about each of these positions, you know, as we get uh, volunteers to step forward. Uh, well, number one, I want to recognize them for doing so and thank them for helping us. And two, just get a little bit of background on each of the, the positions and what the openings are and why, so that we're just sort of clear as we build our government, um, local government, uh, who's going in what spots. So if I could, through the chair, to Mr. Kamalo, just get a little background information on the opening on the Capital Improvement Committee, please. Yeah, uh, through the chair, uh, the board will recall that Jessica Shea actually appeared before the board about two meetings back. Uh, she was one of the applicants to the Appropriations Committee. And at the conclusion of that meeting with the board, uh, the board did suggest to Jessica that she could apply to the CIC, which she has done now. Excellent. That must have been the meeting I was not here for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. It was, it was great. There was some great people stepping up that day. Okay, great. Well, that answers my question on number one. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any further discussion on number one? Okay. Should we take these one at a time? Yeah, might as well. Let's, why not? Let's go, let's go to number two. So, Mr. Chair, well, I, I move that we appoint Jessica Shea to the at-large member position of the capital improvement for a, to complete a five-year term to expire on June 30th, 2016. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Chair votes uh, present, not voting. Um, okay, number two. Mark is an at-large member of the Board of Appeals. Uh, to June 30, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I'd actually like to address items two and three at the same time. Um, I guess my question is, uh, we have one person who uh, seems to be up for a permanent seat or a well, five-year term on the Board of Appeals, another person for an associate seat on the Board of Appeals. And when I look at both applications, both applications are for the Board of Appeals. Uh, there's no specification of one being for an associate seat, one being for a voting seat. And uh, wondering, I guess, <coughs> excuse me, uh, well, my feeling is that it's not appropriate for the decision to be made prior to a meeting uh, that one name is put up for the voting seat and the other, per and the other name is put up for the associate seat uh, without the board first having discussion and an opportunity to speak with. Uh, sure, just one, one second though. Uh, it was, uh, was there any, I, I thought at one point there was a, um, there was some discussion about an associate member voting for, I mean, going for an associate member position versus a voting member. Um, did, it did my, my understanding was that um, you know, throughout time, uh, you know, it's, it's been somewhat of a tradition uh, to go in that manner. But without that being in the town charter or the char an approved charter of the committee or something of that nature, I, I just I don't feel that that's appropriate. Uh, I think that we need to start handling these positions, these 
other committees and our, our duty to appoint people uh, with a little bit more of a standard approach and with more rigor. And it's absolutely nothing to do with you or these people because I don't know who they are, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but uh, I just think we need to really have a standardized approach. And that's probably another topic of conversation that the board should be taking on. So can we get, Mr. Chair, can we get the status of the Board of Appeals as it stands today in terms of members, full members and associate members? Are there one spot open in each, or what's the current situation? That's, that, that's, what, that's how I, I see that. I'm, I'm the liaison, but I missed the last meeting uh, due to illness. Um, but but no, my question was, did Ms. Patel uh, uh, um, uh, apply for an associate membership or, or, or a voting membership in fact the answer to the question is that she did not specify oh, okay. in her application okay. how however when we advertised the positions we did clarify that there was a vacancy for a full member and a vacancy for an associate okay so mr. chair is that what we have then one of each currently is open that is correct thank you okay okay and, and if we were to uh, move Mr. Hyman from associate member to voting member, then we would have two associate member seats open? That's correct. The answer is yes. Again, the underlying being on the fact that that can only happen if the board moves Mr. Hyman to right. full member position. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, um, with, with that, thank you for, for your patience. Please. Uh, thank you. Um, Mark Hyman, 12, in Bridge Road. Um, I've served as an associate member on the Board of Appeals for about a year and a half now. Uh, most of that is, as clerk of the board, uh, handling the opinions and such. Um, I thank the uh, Board of Selectmen for considering to move me up to the vacancy that was recently created. Um, I you know, enjoyed my time on the board. I've enjoyed serving, and I'd very much like to uh, to continue that. I um, I think the point I was going to make was already clarified. I just wanted to point out that if I did move up, there would be another slot opened. And um, um, but I'm here to answer any questions the board may have, uh, as is I believe my co-applicant. So, excellent. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, well, I guess my question is more procedural, and okay. um, because this is on the agenda as uh, voting for one person for a voting seat and another person for an associate member seat, are we able to legally alter that at all, or is this something that should be taken up at another meeting and we uh, we you know put them out there as general candidates for both seats? Mr. Chair? Yes. To follow your term. So the, the agenda is intended, it's, it's my understanding, it's intended to uh, inform the public as to the items that we're going to discuss. Um, but we can move things on an agenda in terms of time slots. You know, we're not fixed to a, speci a specific time slot uh, except for public hearings. And uh, I think there is some flexibility within the topic that we have on the agenda to make decisions as we meet and deliberate. So I would suggest that I, while I appreciate the question, I think we're with, quote, within the four corners of the discussion if we have a discussion about whether the other applicants are interested in the full membership That's or not. That's right. Very good. I, I think was we can do that and be within the, the rules of the agenda, but it probably mm -hmm. makes sense to check with our agenda expert, Mr. Kamalo. Yeah, um, two points of clarification. The Board of Appeals Act specifically reads, the chairman may designate an associate member to sit on the board in case of the absence, inability to act, or interest on the part of a member thereof, or in the event of a vacancy on said board, in which case an associate member may sit as a member of the board until said vacancy is filled. What's not clear in that charge is the definition of when it is filled. 
when it is filled by the board here or when it is filled at the time of the election? Oh, sorry. <coughs> yeah, appointment. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, I don't know if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the <laughs> 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 this is all nice you know, with any opening appointed board and if we have and if, if this board has applicants that <coughs> if this board uh, has applicants and we choose to appoint one then and make sure your microphone is so why don't we yes, and, and if i may also i i'd say two points the second being uh when the question was brought to our attention relative to what position um what position in one second what position uh, Ms. Ms. Patel was, was applying for? Uh, she responded, uh, and, and I quote, I don't mind being considered for a full member if that is what is needed to fill a vacancy. Okay. So we did follow up specifically on that question. So, so with, uh, with that being said, why do we, I, I'd like to invite you up to please. <laughs> Could you help us clarify this? Yes, absolutely. Um, so my name is Super Patel, and um, I strictly was applying for this position as a former voluntary. We just moved in, my family and I, into the town of Hopkinton, and um, saw these vacancies and looked at what I would be interested in. So um, with that, I don't mind uh, removing my application for the member at large and just submitting it only for the associate, just so for the purposes of this meeting. Um, I'm strictly looking to volunteer my time into the city council here, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. See how difficult it is to volunteer? All the reason I'm doing Okay, so are you? I'm satisfied. Are you satisfied? So procedurally, I feel good. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to, if we could, have a couple of questions uh, with the, and discussion with our candidates just about the position mm -hmm. itself, if that's okay. To okay, Mark, would share. you please? Sure. All set? Sure, please okay. start. Hi, Mark. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for your service over the last couple of years on the ZBA as an associate member. Um, in my mind, it makes sense uh, because the ZBA is a little bit of a different body. Uh, as a lot of attorneys will recognize, it's a quasi-judicial body. Mm -hmm. And as such, it requires, I think, a little bit more training than some of the other boards that uh, we have here in town where we can uh, sort of jump in pretty quick. Um, so I think it makes sense to look at the process that we're, we're looking at tonight and take an associate member and move them to a full member position. I don't think it's always done that way. I think per Mr. Sestari, it's kind of the tradition, if you will, and it, it makes sense. Uh, but I don't know if it's necessary, absolutely necessary, but here I believe it does. And again, thanks for, for coming tonight. Um, my, my main question is we have a lot going on in town, as you know. You've been there before a lot of this stuff that's going on at the moment uh, began, so you've been on the board before uh, it, it, some things got uh, brought to light. Do you have any preconceived notions about how that should play out? Are you, are you able to judge that completely impartially uh, with your experience to date on the board? Uh, I, I think if you're speaking about any particular matter, yeah, I, I, I feel I can handle any particular matter um, that's being brought before the board um, impartially. Um, in terms of a general philosophy, um, you know, I, I think the, the point of the Zoning Board of Appeals is to, you know, is to provide a bit of balance to the rigid application of the zoning uh, bylaw. Um, and. Um, you know, to allow for some discretion in instances where it makes sense and it doesn't unduly impact the neighbors and the community as a whole, um, you know, whether that's by variances, special permits, or what have you. Uh, there have been a few matters that have been um, a little more attention paid than normal to, than some of the zoning board uh, matters of late. Um, but I think those, you know, those have to be treated um, similarly. Um, you know, the strict appeals um, have to be looked at on a legal basis. I'm a patent attorney. I, I look, at, look at them on that ground. Uh, I won't say I have a firm grounding of zoning law until I took it up a couple of years ago, but uh, I've gotten a little, uh, a little uh, experience since. Um, but, um, you know, I, I feel I can, I can handle things, uh, you know, even-handedly. 
So outside of your colleagues on the ZBA, whom you've gotten to know in your year and a half or two years on the board, uh, outside them and just general discussions about things that have come before you to date, has anybody in the community reached out to sort of encourage you to step forward and move to a full membership based on certain issues in town and, and, and opinions that they may have about those issues? Has anyone tried to lobby you in any way or anything like no, that? No, no, I haven't been lobbied. The, uh, the idea of, of me stepping up, I think, was raised um, at a Board of Appeals meeting when, um, when Rory, Rory Warren uh, had notified us that he was going to be resigning um, due to other commitments. Um, and I said I'd be happy to do it, um, but that's the only context it's come up in. Great. That's all I got. Thank John, you. John, anything? No, I think Mr. Hurt covered it. I'd just like to say thank you for stepping up. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, you know, the time commitment that's required uh, for the role. So uh, I think that all the basics are covered. Uh, you're having been there for a year and a half, you know, certainly um, gives you a, a running start on this. So uh, I think it all looks good. Thank you. And I've already seen you in action. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as a clerk, I really appreciate everything that you've done. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, to, for the board to approve the nomination and appoint Mark Hyman as an at-large at member of the Board of Appeals to complete a five-year term to expire June 30th, 2018. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes present. Uh, not voting. Okay, so we got that one passed unanimously. Mr. Chair, can we clarify that? For yes. A moment? Well, there was, it's, it's, well, that's what uh, that, that's what we've been doing as chair. And I can vote positive if you want me to. But it was already unanimous with three of you. Okay, I didn't hear the third. I just wanted to make sure we had a had the count. It was three unanimous. And okay. So the chair's not. Uh, yeah. Well, there was, 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 was a tie. So if there was a. Yeah, uh, I haven't I, heard that before. Have, have, we, have we done that? that? That's what. what uh, we don't know, it's, what's going on? What, just, what did I miss here? What did I miss? We just took a vote. Right? I think I missed the meeting. Another one. But I'm always here. What, what's then that? I, then I will. We're moving forward. Just let's go. That's fine. Yeah. It's unanimous. Yeah. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we got Jessica. Okay. Then let's go with Ms. Patel. Um, I, I, well, start with, I start with you, Mr. Sistari. Would you like to ask any questions? How you doing? Get the links Hi, up on my, first of all, I want to thank you for it your understanding tonight. And uh, you know, we appreciate your coming out to, to volunteer. Um, oh, it thanks. shouldn't be this difficult. <laughs> 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 and we're certainly not trying to push people away from volunteering. So. Um, and, uh, yeah, so where are you moving from? Well, um, we were originally renting in West Vermont until we found a house within Hopkinton that we were um, happy with. So it took us two years to actually find that and yeah. moved last year. So. Great. And um, were you c considering any other, any other uh, appointments, any other committees? No, no. What draws you to the ZBA? Well, I, it was strictly to, um, I, I found the context that the uh, Board of Appeals actually uh, works under common to what I currently do in my full-time position, which is working within the conference, uh, confines of the uh, corporate law and transactional regulatory framework. So I, I felt that I can actually provide some kind of benefit to the, uh, the board. And also I um, deal with real estate and zoning, um, transactional business all the time in my current law. So great. Great. something I can at least help with. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Same questions, if I could, please. Um, and to, to Mr. Sestari's point, we never want to push volunteers away. Sure. We just want to make sure we get it right. Uh, because when we don't get it right, we hear about it. Um, uh, so it's important that we sort of go through a little bit of a process up front. Um, so you're an attorney. Correct. Great background for the ZBA. You know what a ZBA does. You know the quasi-judicial body and all that uh, they, the authority that they sort of work within. Um, but has anybody approached you about anything going on in town in this, you know, as we no. talked about earlier with, Ms. with Mark? No. So no one's kind of pushing you one way or another on any of the issues in front of us. You're coming in eyes wide open. Nope. Excellent. I'm all set. 
Great. Well, thank you for thank you for stepping up. Appreciate it very much, especially uh, being new to town. It's a great way to get involved. Um, I, I think the ZBA will keep you busy. Obviously, you have a very fitting background. Um, I'd also like to briefly apologize if I seem distracted. I'm not actually doing anything personal on my phone. Uh, I couldn't get my links to work on my iPad. So but we have it going now. Jamie. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks very much. Thank you. Great. I'd just like to say, really, thank you so much for, for stepping right in, um, you know, just as you come into town. It, this, it's, it's, it's a great town to, um, to volunteer in. Uh, it's, it only, the town only works because of volunteers. Yep. So thank you so much for, for, for stepping right up, and it's a, because it's, that's a, it's a hot spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a hot spot being on the ZBA, and so thank you very much for coming. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, for the board to approve the nomination of Nupa Patel as an associate member of the Board of Appeals to complete a five-year term to expire on June 30th, 2016. So, um, oh, I, sorry, my, one, my one question is, are the associate memberships, uh, are they one year in length? Or is there a longer, is there, a, they're five? Yeah, they're five years. And is this... 2016 is that the longest one before she would have to come before us for uh, reapproval? When did Mark's term expire? Mark's term, mine expires in 2018. Well, maybe we should have to see if she wants to do it again. Um, I'd like to lock her in. <laughs> <laughs> I concur. <laughs> Uh, so I would like to amend amend my motion um, by having this be the longest term that we have available at this point. As an associate member. As an associate member. That's 2018 and 2018. Second. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. So we can do it to Mark. So now we have we still have that one one spot available for the. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Passage unanimously. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thanks a lot. Okay, um, number four. Eddie Lee Schaub, as an uh, at-large member of the Sustainable Green Committee, could be a two-year term to expire June 30th, 2017. It was not here. Okay. Um, do you want to discuss? Chair, could yes. I jump in on the Sustainable Green Committee? Yes. So we have three positions here this evening, or three individuals looking to be appointed this evening. Mm -hmm. How many openings do we have on the Sustainable Green Committee? I, I believe we we have approximately we have approximately seven vacancies right now. So I think we talked about this wow. before. The Sustainable Green Committee is a big committee. Is that correct? Like, well, it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's to my point. Thank you. <laughs> How many are on that committee right now in total? How many seats are there? Um, we have 16. 16. I believe the board did discuss this issue at length with the Sustainable Green Committee, and we settled at a larger number because of the multiple projects. Uh, that the committee um, is generally involved in. Uh, so if we have 16, a quorum is nine, and we have seven vacancies, so we're down to a, a minimum number at the moment. Is that correct? That is correct. So that's problematic in my view. So through the chair, I would agree with Mr. Hur. When this, when this committee was first appointed, there was a lot of projects uh, and a lot of projects have been achieved since then. Um, well, I have no problem with these appointments. I think we should take a look at the charter for the committee and downsize that to a more manageable uh, size, whether it be seven or it be five. You can ruminate on that, Mr. Kamala, with, with, uh, with the current chair of the, of the committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's yeah, absolutely. I, I, I know as, as trying to chair Zach with uh, 16 members this year, it's, um, it's difficult with, with very large uh, groups to actually... So, uh, 
Yeah, so it's probably something we need to have a formal discussion around uh, as, a, as an agenda item. As a future agenda but item. Right. But it's probably best to start out with trimming it down to, if these appointments go through tonight, that'll be 12 people. We should probably trim the membership down to 13 so we have the odd number. And then just uh, wait for future attrition if we want to cut yeah. it down anymore. I just want to make sure it can work. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they have a lot of times when they get together, if one person has a sick child, that's it. Yeah. I think these three appointments, though, would be great. Okay, so we actually, let me let me put it out there. Is anybody, are any of the three um, candidates here this evening? Okay, so there are no questions. So actually, the chair would like to entertain a motion to uh, appoint all three, if I may, during a um, with with one motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board vote to approve items. Uh, Items 1.4, 1.5, and 1.6 on the consent agenda. So second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Unanimously. Mr. Chair, if we could add a future agenda item to the size or to a study and discuss the size of the Sustainable Green Committee, please. I want to say thank goodness for the consent agenda so we can get through this meeting quickly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Now let's get to the, the meat of this because we only do have, uh, we have a hard stop at 7.30. Um, we, we lose this room at 7.30. Yes, we do. I just... Uh, okay. If we'd known that, we wouldn't have broken everything out of the consent agenda. <laughs> okay. So, we're really here for the special town meeting ballot questions and articles. The board would, will consider approving ballot questions to be submitted to the town clerk and placed on the town, on the special town meeting warrant for October 26, 2015, special town meeting. Any other articles for consideration? The uh, special town meeting calendar is attached. Um, Mr. Hur, would you like to start the discussion? Um, I'm trying to see the two articles that are submitted. They're in your, right in front of you, right there, on oh, a piece of paper. Sorry. One is Central School and one is an auxiliary facility at Fruit Street. Those are the only two that have been submitted, Mr. Kamala? That is correct. Are those the only two that we expect to be submitted? Based on discussions we've had with individuals interested in uh, placing warrant articles, the answer is correct. However, we all know the warrant closes uh, on the 9th, 8th, on the 8th, yeah, Thursday the 8th. So we're still encouraging folks to not submit and wait for special to annual town meeting in May. Okay. So do um, you want to take these one at a time, Mr. Chair? You want to yeah, yeah, let's do them one at a time. Let's do, yes, absolutely. The first is the center school. And uh, from my perspective, I think this is uh, what we've been working for for several years now as a community. Uh, the elementary school building committee has done a fantastic job getting uh, us ready and to this point for this particular um, uh, approach. And, and I, as one member, fully support putting this before town meeting uh, and the voters of Hopkinton at a special election. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I just want to clarify is that these are ballot questions. These are not warrant articles, okay? And uh, town council has reviewed these? Town council as well as the proponents. Okay. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I have no idea if this has any significance or not. Um, you know, the wording that's there. In the center school article, it's saying that the, well, first of all, I don't know if it should be called the center school article um, because it's not center school. It's, it's a replacement for that function. But at the end, it says that uh, the early elementary school and related site development on town-owned property located at 135 Hayden Row Street in Hopkinton to replace the existing center elementary school. I guess it's just a net, but... Should it be to replace the function of the of the existing center elementary school? I mean, I know that 
right now we have absolutely zero inclination to try to revive that school as a school. But I'm probably just picking it at words. Forget it. Mr. Chair, I would support Mr. Sestari, though, in his concern about the uh, uh, article being called the center school. I'm trying to remember the ballots now. Um, and I think there's a title to each question. And if the title was the center school, I think that is misleading. It should be elementary school building, new elementary school, yeah. or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah, early elementary school is early, yeah, how early it's elementary school here. is what's referenced here in the article or in the warrant itself. Hey, right, Jeff. Sounds like you're uh, on the right track. <laughs> if, you know anything for me? If I may. Yeah, just yeah, you may. Smile. <laughs> the the titles that you see today are simply for reference. Okay. When the ballot questions are set, they're simply numbered. There are no titles assigned to the ballot questions. Okay. So then we can put these these changes in. In terms of, I was going to respond to that. Um, Mr. Sestari, you make a good point. However, I should stress, and Joy is here to confirm, the language that you see has been reviewed with the MSBA, with Town Council, and this is the language that is used uh, throughout the state. Well, yeah, yeah. Joe, while you're out of the room, um, Mr. Sestari brought up the fact that um, it could be confusing to people by calling it um, the uh, center school, basically the center school replacement project. And what he mentioned was if we could add um, to replace replace the function of the existing center school element, the center uh, elementary school. Before I stopped talking, I convinced myself that I was being a little picky. So let's get that on the table, Joe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, um, I, I would recommend uh, I, I, just to reiterate what, what Norman, the town manager, explained. Um, it's a, everything we do is a highly regulated process, right? So um, this had several back and forths. It started with the MSBA gave us proposed language. We reviewed it with town council. They made some changes. The MSBA reviewed that those changes, they made additional changes. They sent it back to us. We made those again, and we sent it back, and then they said, this is good. So uh, that took a couple of weeks. So um, we're at a point where the language makes sense to us, and it makes sense to the MSBA, and uh, I think that it's the language that we want uh, you guys, we want the Board of Selectmen to approve. Yeah, I don't have any problem. Okay. Mr. Chair, do we need to vote to approve this ballot question? Is that the action item? That is the action. Right? So, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the ballot question specific to the elementary, early elementary school uh, for the special town meeting and then special town election this fall. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's also unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's, um, let's discuss the auxiliary facility. Okay. Do you want, uh, well, I start with you. Uh, oh, Mr. Mosier, you can start this one if you wish. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I think this is something that didn't go through at the annual town meeting, is that correct? Yeah, the, uh, I believe the issue was that um, the language that came out of uh, town council at the time um, would not allow it to uh, uh, be able to go on the ballot or something to that effect. And um, so they, the proponents, uh, the, the uh, uh, committee decided to pull it. And the language has been corrected. Town Council is comfortable with this. The, the Parks and Recreations Committee is comfortable with this language. Let's, let's ask. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, Town Council has reviewed the uh, rewriting of the article which clearly adds an indoor practice facility to the building that we're, we're uh, funding with CPC funds, outdoor pavilion, restrooms, uh, small concession area, and storage. So it's two very specific entities that par the Park and Rec Commission would like to build at the same time for economies of scale. So, so this language is consistent with your intent? Correct. 
will work. You won't have to pull it? Yeah, okay. According, to, okay. according to town council, uh, where, where we've had a number of discussions, this is written clearly for the town to also understand that we're not looking for additional funds to supplement the CPC funds. This is an indoor practice facility to service a myriad of sports activities up on Fruit Street. So, so through the chair, so at the, at the meeting, some, someone will have to make that clear, right? we're, uh, whether it's you or the, or the chairman or somebody. We're, we're hopeful to make, uh, have the opportunity to make a presentation to show folks where we are with the CPC building, if you, if you want to refer to it as that, and then the proposed plans for this adjunct indoor practice facility. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I was just wondering, this says um, it's related to the construction of an indoor recreational facility or athletic center. Are they one and the same, or is that two, two separate? One and the same. Just a, re uh, just a different reference to the same uh, indoor practice facility. Should we get rid of one of those and just refer uh, to it as one thing? Uh, it, it's, that's beyond my... Uh, I mean, to me, it's just confusing. It kind of sounds like we got two things going on, and you're going to pick one. I'll be, to, I'll be happy to go back to town council to see if there's some additional clarification needed for that, uh, just to make it clear with the with the townsfolk. Okay. Excuse me. There is no time to do further research with town council. Are you being picky again, Mr. Sister? I don't think so on this one. I mean, you know, we're we're saying we're putting a fu we're putting funds aside to build this or that at Fruit Street Athletic Fields. And there's no, there's no definition of this and that. So through, through the chair. Sure. So Bob, yes, did we get hung up on last time where this was called an athletic, I can't remember the specifics of the town meeting, I just remember it got hung up. Was it because it was called an athletic center and there was going to be an indoor component wasn't specified? I can't remember the exact specifics, but I know part of the problem with the article is the Article 22, which was these funds, and the, the other article, which was CPC funds, were so close, I think it was town council didn't, didn't think people would go ahead and understand. So I, 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 I can see Mr. Sestari's point, but at the same time, if, if something was approved as an athletic center, and this is clarifying the indoor recreational component. If we remove one, could we inadvertently uh, remove ourselves from access to some of that funding because we've changed the language or something? These are questions beyond my, uh, beyond my degree. But I don't want to. I don't want to outthink ourselves here either. Thank you. To John's point, I believe from my prior conversations with town council that the reference. Um, is, is currently structured, i.e. referencing the, the recreational facility, indoor recreational facility or athletic center, um, was done so as a way of facilitating the borrowing that is required to move this project forward. Mm -hmm. Right. I, you know, I just don't want it. This has already stumbled at town meeting once, and I don't want to see it stumble again. That's, that's my point. Um, Thank you. Neither do we. So I just I just want to make sure that it has the best the best opportunity. So I think we'd have to, as a commission, I think we'd have to heed the advice of town council that it's properly written, and then the onus is on us to go ahead and explain it and get people to jump behind it. I mean, can we can we approve this? You know, with some conditional clause for town council just to review that portion of it. We are submitting the ballot questions to town clerk this evening. Uh, the lights are off down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, she, she's waiting and she has to receive this. Um, we, we, we can uh, ask Jamie and, and Bob to quickly check in with Jenny if she's available by cell phone. Otherwise, this, this should proceed as currently drafted. Okay. And then I, then I think the on, through the through the chair that I think the onus is on the Park and Rec Commission in the presentation we make that night to, to explain to people it's one and the same, and that these funds aren't going to be used for the to supplement the CPC fund funding. Okay. Our commission looked uh, 
we discussed it at great length, understanding your, your concern to keep the, the warrants short. And we felt as though, as a commission, that it's going to save the town some money to have these two things built at the same time. And the fact that we missed out at the, the regular town meeting is, we don't want to get in anybody's way, but I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. Okay, Mr. Hart. As long as town council has read this and has approved this, it is confusing, to Mr. Cesari's point, but as long as town council has read it and approved it, I'm okay. We can have some more discussion about it at town meeting, but when it, this is the ballot question. When it gets to the ballot, you know, a lot of people don't go to the ballot, don't go to town meeting. So we may have some good discussion at town meeting, but about at the ballot, we may not have that opportunity. But if they're good with it, I'm, I'm okay. I'm just nervous because town council approved the one previously, and that didn't uh, that didn't got, got stuck the last time. But I, I, but I'm I'm good with it because because he wouldn't make the same mistake twice. Okay, so chair will entertain a motion to um, approve the uh, auxiliary facility to go on the uh, ballot. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Abstained. Unanimous also. Okay. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you very much. Okay, Fire Chief hiring process update. Mr. Kamalo, can you enlighten us? Yeah, I throw the chair and, and Mr. Moja, feel free to jump in here. Uh, as reported previously, the Fire Chief hiring committee is in full swing. Uh, we have a two week regular meeting schedule. Uh, so far, the position has been posted. The closing date is four days from today, uh, October 9th. Um, we have received applications from all over the country. Uh, and secondly, uh, we assigned two members of the committee to interact directly with members of the fire department to seek their input. Uh, that process is now complete. We believe the surveys are now submitted and in position with, in possession uh, with the, the HR director. Anything, any, any, um, any questions from Mr. Kamalo on it? All set. Excellent. But um, what kind of input are we seeking from the fire department members? Yeah, similar to what we did with the, fire, with the police department, we constructed a survey uh, focusing specifically on the characteristics of a future fire chief that they envisage. So through the chair, yeah, we did this, this exact same process with, uh, it's, it's, this pretty much mirrors the process we use for the police chief. We had an outside resource that has is, that is, uh, held that position, um, reached out to the union personnel of the department for uh, some brief survey questions, uh, bring them into the process. Uh, just hopefully this one will go a little quicker. Faster. Yeah. Faster. Okay. All right. So, um, any uh, future agenda items? Just that note about the sustainable green thing. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. Um, reviewing, doing a doing a full review of uh, how we post review and appoint uh, committee memberships. Um, I'd also like an update we had discussed uh, I, I believe we had discussed having a conversation with the town clerk about a charter review committee mm. actually that was we just uh, approved the minutes on the consent agenda hmm? we just approved the minutes of our last meeting on that one <laughs> um, yeah, and I'd actually like to see if we can get the uh, uh, public uh, parking options and uh, actually you brought up the, the um, pavement management because we're doing a lot of uh, paving in town to give people an update on, on how we're progressing there. Even my kids commented how smooth some of the roads are now. They said, boy, Hopkinton must be spending a lot of money on the roads now, huh? <laughs> I, I just think it's, it's going to look great coming into town with the, with the sidewalk the section. <laughs> it's, going to, it's, it's going to look great with the new sidewalk. That's up then. 
<laughs> okay, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Comment, please. Oh, sure. Mr. Chair, excellent meeting this evening. Well run. Thank you, sir. Yeah, best meeting. Oh, almost on time. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? Unanimous.